I don't know that I will ever again be able to share a story quite like this. I'm leaving this video pretty uncut because I have to to justify this story. It's wild. It's crazy. It's unbelievable. Deep down, I don't know if I ever really believed that it could end the way it did. Frank was a deer that popped onto the radar in November of 2021. I found out that he had relocated from a neighbor's property and they had been trying to kill him for a couple years. And I was like, wow, that's a mature deer. That's a broken G2 buck. He's a nice deer. He's an he's, his frame is impressive. Yeah, it is. The first buck I was after this year in 2022 was a buck that we called Skinny. And Dad was able to harvest him on September 26th. Congrats to Dad. He was just an awesome deer. After Skinny was gone, my focus shifted to the Big Ten, and I had some amazing hunts for the Big Ten. You can see all those hunts on the channel, and my uncle was able to take him on November 3rd. Congrats to Uncle John, another just awesome old mature deer. Now, after the Big Ten, my focus shifted to the Big Eight or Frank. I was able to get out November 4th through 6th, and I did not lay eyes on Frank, but I had an amazing encounter with the Big Eight on November 4th where I couldn't take a shot because he was on my neighbor's side of the fence. I will shoot that deer. Frank's original range was pretty specific, and you can see what it is here. Uh, it's the cameras that have the black icon. So I kind of knew that he was always going to be there. He was an old deer, and he had a small core area. The first encounter I had with Frank was on November 12th. My thought process that day was to kind of split the difference between where I had the encounter with the big eight and Frank's range. I knew if either one of those bucks were between does, there was a good chance they were gonna be coming through this inside corner. When I got up in here, there was a buck standing about 
125 yards away to the north and it was a big buck it was I'm not sure which one it was Well, that was Frank. Man, I was so distraught that Frank got by me. Little did I know that was just the beginning. Uh, my neighbor, Wayne's, their farm, they finally decided to pick the corn behind me today. It's three o'clock and there's tons of fresh corn on the ground and from what I can tell, the most recent information that I have, seeing Frank yesterday, the pictures of him and the pictures of the big eight, both those bucks look like they're in this thicket. So there's such a good chance that they come out to this field because there's lots of does in here too. They know what's going on. They've heard the combine before. They are just waiting for that sucker to leave and they are coming out here. But I'm down to my last two hours basically of early archery season so this is gonna have to be a buzzer beater Literally just freaking sailed one right over Frank's back. I have hunted so hard to get an opportunity like that. And I can see my arrow sticking in the tree. I've not missed a deer in so long. That's uh, it's a crazy feeling. But I'm thankful that it was a clean miss. This is, this is real. This is real hunting, so happy to happy to share it with you guys after missing him on that Sunday night I did not have a picture of him the whole next week until Friday night the night before opening day of gun season and he came by my home camera heading back to his original core area right, it's about 7 7 20 November 20 good time this morning got set up and before it was shooting light heard a deer come in and it was making some racket sounded like it was maybe making a rub so we knew it was a buck and we think it was Frank um, it was just a little too early for the camera and the gun all right Sunday afternoon um, back in the stand where I had the encounter with Frank last Sunday night. We think we saw him in this woods this morning to the west, and this is generally where he lives, so.
miss him? I don't think so. I'm so mixed with the emotions right now because I don't. He ran out there and stopped. Mm-hmm. And, and then ran back to the left like he didn't. My God, you couldn't ask for that to work out any better. He came out down below and worked his way in. So we just got down. We're gonna run out here while it's still light and see if we got blood and see if we can't track him up. Going on. I went uh, back to the area where I thought uh, we may have heard a crash and I just happened to stumble on blood about 150 yards back in the timber uh, from where he was standing when I shot. And I was able to follow that blood for about 75 yards, but it wasn't good. Hopefully it was just a graze and he's okay. It's important to me to always share with you guys the real story. Hunting on TV, there's there's a lot of lot of success. There's also a lot of ups and downs that come with hunting. So this is a major down for me and I'm happy to be able to share it with you guys because it's it's real life. This is legit. People go through these things. Everybody gets in a slump once in a while and you know it's it's up to us what we do how we focus to pull ourselves out and and get back on the good side so you know it's not necessarily what happened to us or what we did it's what we do next the rest of the gun season i was not able to lay eyes on frank but i was able to film my cousin tyler take down the big eight the final sunday night of the rifle season in wisconsin an unbelievable night Another great story. That one's on the channel as well. Check it out. After I grazed Frank, the picks were sparse. The first maybe pick I had of him was on 12-1, and it was on a camera that he had never been on before. The second picture I had of him was a definite. I definitely knew it was him on the same camera basically one week later on December 7th. As luck would have it, December 7th was the one day that I got out muzzleloader season. Unfortunately, I was not able to lay eyes on Frank. After muzzleloader season, I ended up getting one more picture of Frank, which you will see shortly. What's up guys? It is December 16th. This is my first late season attempt for Frank. Gotten, I would say, eight to 10 inches of snow on the ground here. And it's just after one o'clock and the snow is supposed to stop after one. And it's been snowing off and on for three days. I'm headed to the Bear Creek corner. I got a picture of Frank coming through that corner at 5.30 uh, yesterday morning. and he was kind of headed back to the area that was his core before I had the couple encounters with him where I kind of changed that core. Um, but this is a spot that is safe for me to go to um, with the wind. I expect to see a ton of deer tonight. So in this spot, I can visually see a long way. And because this is my first attempt late season, I'd really just like to lay eyes on him and kind of see where he's coming out, at least where he's coming out tonight. Um, so then I can adjust because I'll have a few more tries at him late season. But you know, I wouldn't be going here if I didn't think there was a reasonable chance that he could walk by here and I could kill him here tonight. So, um, okay, I am settled in. It's uh, about two. There was one doe on the field. Um, luckily, I think it was just her. And a lot of times you'll get that when it stops snowing um, early afternoon. They just gonna, they just want to get up right away. Um, but I think it was just her. And so what I did is I just, I just walked at a normal pace right at her. And I find that when you do that, they just see you and run off. They don't blow or anything. They're just like, okay, I'm out of here. And they'll also run a good enough distance where they're not going to stop and watch you keep walking. So I think I did the right thing bumping her when I got in here. And that was
was the only deer that I know of and there's got to be so many deer around here right now. So that was about as good as it could have possibly went. Um, so we're off to a good start. Catch up with you when some deer start moving. So this was about 315. I had so many deer around me, so many eyes, and I've played this game before. It felt like such a good night, and I didn't want to screw up a chance at Frank, so I basically just stopped filming, waiting for the bucks. At 4.30, there were three big does and two fawns on the food plot, and those big does whipped their heads to the west and back in the woods at about 70 yards, about 20 feet up in the air, I could see this tree moving back and forth. Smoke city, baby. Smoke city. Frank is done. Frank is done. Are you freaking kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me right now? Are you kidding me? Let the freaking go. Woo! 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 Can you kill a buck three times? Woo! <laughs> Are you kidding me? Oh my god. 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 Oh my
Oh. Oh my god. He's dead. I'm not even kidding. Just like two minutes ago. The battery's running low on the camera. I had to turn it off and on. And I and you and I, I never even like I decided at three o'clock I was like, I'm not even filming these deer. I'm not screwing up a chance at Frank. I could see trees moving like 70 yards back in there. He was rubbing trees and I'm like, and there was a bunch of does and fawns out here. And they looked back in there and they freaking left. And I'm like, oh yeah, he's coming. Yeah, buddy. Can you kill a buck three times? Did you get him on video? On video. Drilled him. You can watch him and you see him dead? You see him dead? Hit him in the heart at 25 yards. Nice job. Oh man, the well, it, I hope he's dead because there ain't a deer within 300 yards of me right now the way I screamed. <laughs> well, <sighs> where did you shoot him out of? The muddy? Bear Creek Corner. Yeah, well. We gotta get going before that blood sinks down it's in the snow. Out. It's sinking down in the snow right as we're sitting here. Are you guys ready? I got you with mine. All right, we're live. We uh, got a bunch of people here, so <laughs> we're not we're not giving away what happened yet, but we got a blood trail. So here we go. Right next to the cooler of bush light. Oh, they're all empty. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Holy crap. Yeah, when it's easy on the snow. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, it's all spraying out this left side. It's spraying three feet from where <laughs> he's running. It's actually a pretty good sign. Yeah, he, uh, he carried the arrow. He didn't, he didn't drop it. So. When you're at this pace, it's pretty easy to follow. Uh, it's, you know it's a good Okay, trail. this is this is a scrape he made. I could see the, I could see a tree shaking back in here. Look at this. He's great. I'll be good day. That horny old bugger. That, that, look at the size of that. That's, he made that. Oh, Before he came out. Harry, go lay down. No. <laughs> <laughs> so there was there was uh, four or five does on the food plot, and they. Oh, we still don't know what's happening. I got I got light on right. They just look at me. Cranked, cranked their head and looked back in here, and then I saw that tree moving above that scrape, and I was like, Yeah, that's. I don't think he's gonna be too much further here. Can't be. We reviewed the footage. Straight up took his heart out. So you're saying it's a he? Yeah, it's a he. I suppose. I guess we gave it away there. He's heading, he's heading home. And why? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty easy when it's at this place. Huh? He went quite a ways. Over, well over 100, I think. A little bit further than the guy was going. I've had a heart shot deer go along dang ways before the amount of spray. There he is, right there. There we go. Right there he is. Oh, cool. Okay. Jeepers. Right there. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh. Yeah, fine, Billy. All right. <sighs> The legend of Frank. <laughs> Third time's a charm. Oh my gosh, he went way too far. Boy, he went away, didn't he? Right here? 
Did you use a field pipe? <laughs> That's why he went so far. <laughs> oh my goodness. Unreal. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. So I missed this deer on uh, November, what was it, 13th? 13th. Sunday, November 13th. Shot right over his back. And then grazed him with a gun. One week later, out of the same tree. And see, I've been on a mission since, but this is an old buck. He basically had the same antlers last year. I believe he's six and a half, just an old warrior. I, can't, I just can't believe it. I can't, I honestly can't believe that I got another opportunity at him. Frank, I love, I love these old deer that don't have crap for racks. Well, I shouldn't say that, he's really nice. <laughs> hey, Lucas is asking where you hit him with a gun. Oh. Other side. Oh, right underneath there. Right there. That's where you graze him in the leg there. Yeah, it's pussy. Underneath. Right here. Underneath. underneath. Right there, that's where you grazed him. Mm. Wow. Huh? It truly is a graze, huh? Yeah. So you're saying it was a luck that you hit him this time then, or? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, third right time's in. a charm. Yeah, third I time's guess. a charm. Um, I was really doubting my abilities <laughs> for the last, since November 3rd, well, since the 13th and then more so since the 20th. Was it Friday the 13th? Sunday. It was not, uh, Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> but that was 35 yards. This was 25 tonight, so. A little bit easier for, tonight. First, yeah, first yeah. pin is a big difference. Yeah. <laughs> so, awesome. December 16th? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. First yeah. buck I've killed on December 16th. <laughs> <laughs> Second late season buck. Oh. <laughs> and we got man thanks for coming everybody wow. this is the most people I've had uh, recovering a book well you always come for us and everybody's working together here right yeah. <laughs> heck yeah man so thankful Frank was the last deer this is the only season ever that we were able to harvest every single target buck that we had on the property. The four deer that were five and a half or older. I would love to have you guys join me on this ride. If you want to come along, please hit that subscribe button. Take care everybody. Till next time. Mm -hmm.